Well, Ann Coulter uh, is the best-selling author, lots of big bestsellers, and of course her column every week, but she's got a, her latest book, a huge bestseller, and I think the best book she's written so far, Resistance is Futile. And it's uh, if you love Trump, if you hate Trump, it's an important book to read. Resistance is Futile. Uh, and you go to AnnCoulter.com or Amazon, you can get it there. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. Uh, you know, uh, I was watching uh, MSNBC and CNN, and they were in tears as tear gas was thrown at the poor refugees. And they said they've never seen anything like this. Well, about a minute of research shows the Obama administration used the tear gas, same tear gas, 500 times on the border. Yes, 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 yes. And um, the New York Times, as all liberals were, used to be quite sensible on things like whether we should be allowed to have a country, um, particularly when, when Clinton was president. Um, there were a bunch of op-eds and, and editorials um, about Doris Meisner, head of the Immigration Service, um, and how she was preparing for, in case there were a surge at the border, they were building tent cities and, and, and coming up. And all these guys voted for, for the Secure Fence Act. It was a fence that was supposed to be put up. Um, the Obama administration never completed it. You would think the one thing Trump could do if you weren't a complete con artist. Whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> that Obama voted for, that Hillary voted for, that everyone voted for, just the secure fence. That would, have, that would at least cover something. No, we, we've got nothing, nothing, nothing. And even though um, when you were watching MSNBC and CNN <laughs> last night, um, it, what the, the TV lately has been a perfect illustration of my book, Resistance is Futile, which is um, you could watch these shows at least, I don't know if it was last night or the night before, and, and not have any idea what date it was, not even to the year, because they are <laughs> right back <laughs> to the Russian collusion. <laughs> They have gone right back to it. You couldn't tell me if that was, it could be December 2016, it could be May 2017, and it's another crazy BSE story. Um, but let's get back and get back to um, Trump being a total con. Wait, 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 wait. Have, you, have you turned on our... you were taking some um, objection to that. Have you turned on our president? Um... I wouldn't phrase it that way. I just think he's a lying con artist. If, hey! you, call that, if you want to call that turning, Mark. <laughs> I can't, I've never, never heard wall. you like he this. You're, no you're... interest in a wall. All he cares about is, is what will be good for Jared and Ivanka and his business interests. What happened to you? Did you and fall? I still would have voted for him and written in Trump we trust because at least he was saying the right stuff. Did you fall down and hit your head on the way to the phone? <laughs> okay, for two years you've been telling me it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. When do you, okay, I want to make a bet with you right now. <laughs> Right now, Mark Simone, a big spending bill is coming. It's our last chance. There is no tomorrow. Will Trump sign a spending bill that has no funding for a wall, which footnote he doesn't need, but he keeps claiming he does. So as long as he's going to say, I'm not doing it without, without Congress approving and the ACLU and the Southern Poverty, as long as that's what he wants, will he sign such a bill like he did um, with the, the omnibus spending bill earlier this year so that he could spend the weekend in Mar-a-Lago? Or will he veto it and shut down? Well, he won't shut down the government. He'll shut down one agency, Department of Homeland Security. There isn't even anything horrible that will happen. I say he signs it and tells us, don't worry, I moved the embassy. I got more, more funding for the embassy. <laughs> well, oh, you're a... Uh... Well, He's going to fund something utterly idiotic and acts like that was what we wanted. Well, all right. But, uh, like a boy who gives you Super Bowl tickets for your birthday. That isn't what I wanted. I, all right. I don't want to say the wall is coming because then I sound like one of those waiters, you know, when your food doesn't come. Like, <laughs> Where's my food? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You always keep that. It's coming. <laughs> Uh, but let's not say you don't have the wall right away. I like this tear gas method. That was pretty good. <laughs> You just like it for the cruelty. <laughs> it's not cruel. Hey. I know, I know. Did you see there was some Border Patrol agent saying, saying um, 
that the, the pepper gas is actually really tasty. You can put it on food. It's good. <laughs> Well, the Obama administration fired this same tear gas at the border over 500 times, and all the media thought it was wonderful. In fact, they praised them, saying, look how nice they are. They're not using lethal force. Yeah, well, they ought to be using lethal force. I mean, (laughs) I can't believe I'm living in this never-never land where... Everyone agrees that it's okay for the president to unilaterally bomb innocent countries. Um, for example, Syria, because Ivanka cried. We got a huge, huge oh, report a year later. It was allegedly because they had used sarin gas, nerve gas. Oh, it violates human rights. And the, the Convention Against Chemical Weapons spent six months digging through the corpses, um, checking for nerve gas. Nope. No nerve gas was used. But we're all on board that a president can unilaterally bomb an innocent country that poses no threat whatsoever to one single American. But a wide open border where (laughs) millions of people pour through, killing thousands of Americans every year. Every year. (laughs) And no, no, the commander in chief. God, no, that's crazy. (laughs) You can't do anything about that. (laughs) But the wall is coming. (laughs) <laughs> he if he wanted a wall we'd have a wall by now have you seen and the it, prototypes <laughs> hey have you seen his golf club in scotland when trump wants to get something done he gets it done you know that better than anyone mark simone oh. he knows how to get past government bureaucrats objecting neighbors um um what is it those um well you're you're right, but <laughs> so uh, you're right, and uh, nobody is more he of an. He doesn't want to build it. All he cares about is making sure Ivanka and Jared are well received when they get back to New York. And I got a tip for them: they aren't going to be. But uh, it doesn't matter if he doesn't build the wall. This isn't helping. Yeah, uh, and, and again, he's the world expert on building stuff. So why why do you think the real reason is just he's afraid to build it? Or? I believe I suggested. <laughs> The reason when I casually threw in that he was a BSing con artist. He's not a BSing con artist. So what do you think? It's Ivanka and Jared whispering in his ear, don't really build it. Well, definitely that's happening. But why would he listen to them? Because, I mean, by all evidence, all he cares about is promoting his family and business interests and not about the country. Why has he hired the people he's hired? Why are Ivanka and Jared still there? Gonna... Every piece of advice Jared has given the president has led to complete disaster. And by the way, I wrote about um, Jared's latest completely idiotic idea last week. Um, Let's release criminals, the most successful government program in my lifetime, or government action of any sort, cleaning up New York City. Every New Yorker knows what I'm talking about. That was, that was basically, you know, after the 60s and 70s of liberal crime policies. In any event... Okay, I've gone after John Kelly, Kirsten Nielsen, um, Gary Cohn, and the rest of the Goldman Sachs faction at the White House. No one ever said, ooh, ooh, Trump's going to be mad at you for this. I have finally launched an attack on, on, on Jared, and everyone says, uh-oh, this is it. This is it. He's going to stop us. No, no, he's going to attack. Why should that be? Why should be, that be? I'm... Because he's related to Trump. This is why you don't hire relatives. Well, but every president had a crazy brother. Billy Carter, Donald Nixon, <laughs> screwing up. They this time it's Jared. Put them in the White House and make them special advisor to everything. Uh, this, hey, Billy, what should we do with criminal law? Yeah, uh, This is his Bobby Kennedy. You've got to have one of them in the White House. Um, for the first time... <laughs> In a decade, the media took its nose out of JFK's butt to <laughs> criticize him for one thing. Quiz. What was that one thing, Mark Simone? Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, I can't argue with it. You're not wrong about these things. But uh, uh, but everybody get the book. That's the most important thing. Uh, and it, By the way, it's a holiday season. Christmas present. You don't know what to get somebody? Get a man Coulter's book. Uh, resistance is futile, especially if they're a crazy liberal. Get them the book. It's actually instructional for them. And uh, and as you can see, I am honest about everything when it comes to the president, but the Russia stuff is BS. It is, but get this book. It's her best book yet, and it just it's a uh, it's different from all the other books. The writing, the speed, the pace. It's really uh, an amazing book. Resistance is futile. It's Ann Coulter's new book. You can go to Amazon or go to AnnCoulter.com and sign up there. You can get her column and everything. Follow Ann Coulter on Twitter and 
Facebook. And Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Mark Simone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.